Well, with my revisit for Lost Magic done, I figure it's time to do another poll video. And some of these options are going to be new. A few of them are going to be revisit options. Mostly because of stretching on the video footage. Which kind of does bug me nowadays. So I sort of want to go back and redo these eventually anyway. But, you know, we can always wait to do another revisit if that's what people prefer after I get done with um, Uzumaki Chronicles 2. But I guess we'll start out with um, the revisit options because they're all DS titles and just get them all out of there right away. And first up, we'll have Bleach the Third Phantom. Now, the biggest problem I see with um, revisiting this is mostly because I'll probably play it the same way I did last time. So it means I'm probably going to overpower the enemies by overleveling because I find it very hard to resist doing that in this game because it's so very easy to abuse the leveling system if you have characters with healing abilities. So much so that you can easily make Rukia your most powerful character in the game, by far. Um, or Hime is not too bad either, because of the same reason. She can power level herself up to max level very early on in the game with her um, starting ability. After that, you just have to stat pump her um, strength and evasion, so she's very fast. And so hard to hit that the regular enemies just can't deal with her in story mode. They'll find her so untouchable that basically she'll just counterattack for them for massive damage, without taking any hits in return. It's kind of crazy. Um, there's a couple other units that get the advantage of that, too. So much so I almost have to say it's not worthwhile to even put points in anything besides some basic healing skills for most healers and put the rest of their points into stat pumping. Um, having more advanced um, Q abilities isn't very helpful unless you're Rukia, and even then, you'd be better off probably saving some of those points for um, pumping your um, SP, because I've been told your SP determines how powerful your keto abilities are in the game, ironically enough. So yeah, um, if I go back to this one, it's going to be more for the story, which is a bit of a mixed bag in my opinion, than the um, gameplay itself. Um, next up, we have Luminous Arc. Yeah, I didn't stretch the footage as bad on this one as some other games, since it's only about half the screen. But even so, I'd still like to revisit it. Though I guess with the question with this one, should I um, do a new game, or should I do New Game Plus? Because in New Game Plus, there's a bonus dungeon I could explore. Adding some additional lengths to the, to the game, I suppose, but it also gives me an optional area to visit that's supposedly um, challenging, even for a high-level party. And finally, we have Hero Saga, Leviathan Tactics, the one I don't have a box for. Picked this one up for like $8. Um, and like the other two, it's also a strategy RPG, so it's definitely not going to have the fastest hum battles out there. In fact, the battles in this game can sort of drag for quite a while because the maps are decent size and your units can only move you know, a handful of squares at a time. And usually you're going to be stuck advancing slowly but steadily across the map in my experience. Of course, the big problem with this game is that your recruitment of characters is random and there's certain characters that are just far superior to others. So you're going to spend a lot of time on certain stages just trying to farm them out. That way you can then abuse them later on down the road. Um, there's one character in particular that's super useful because he has the ability to basically charge your super attacks. And if you give him certain items, he can basically give you a full charge right at the start of a battle. So you can then go out and then start dropping five super attacks right at the start of the battle and start breaking through enemy lines and utterly just shattering them. Easily bringing the enemies on unit score down to yours, if not lower, in a hurry. So yeah, there's certain units in this game that are just far better than other units, and it's sort of irritating. I mean, it's not based on their their um, stats or anything. It's just their abilities are so much better, they can easily break the game. Uh, well, uh, next, I guess, we'll look at the only GameCube option I'm really going to throw out there. Um, Tales of Symphonia. To be honest, um, if I do this one, I'm probably going to be looking at a walkthrough, because I'd rather do the true ending than, say, the bad ending or something. So, yeah, if I do this one, I'm going to be following someone's... um walk through online on how to do this without screwing it up for um, getting the true ending. Now I'm going to have to reach over here and start digging through my binder for some stuff. Uh, well, I guess we'll... Um, well, first off, I'll offer up the um, .hack GU series, which actually is comprised of three games. Um, Rebirth, Reminiscence, and um, Redemption. So yeah, the other Dot .hack series on the PS2 that came to America. Um, it's actually improved, in my opinion, over the previous set of games. Since you don't have to do as much micromanagement of the party to get the abilities you need to readily advance through the story mode. Which is a definite plus. Um, 
on the downside, you, you might argue it's just another um, game pretending to be an online game, but it's not really. <laughs> okay, let's see. I'll also offer up Artolinko 1 and 2. Honestly, I've never really played much of these. I've only um, checked to see if the discs actually work, really. So I've only ever seen far enough into like the tutorial on like one of them. So I have no idea if the story is any good or not. With the Dot Hack GU series, at least I played it previously, so I could tell you something about the story if you ask me about it. Uh, no, 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 nothing there. Oh yeah, I guess I can go over the PC options real quick because I don't have the binder with the um, other disc. Um, I'll cover on Disgaea, the PC version. I can't do the PS2 version of it because it's in 240p and my um, capture device only likes things in 480 and um, to higher. Um, so yeah, if I tried doing an actual PS2 copy of this game, there'd be a lot of drop frames and stuff, so it'd be really messed up footage and there'd be lost audio and stuff. So yeah, I'd be looking at the PC version of Disgaea, if, if we do it. Also, I'll offer up Phantom Brave, that's also going to be the PC version. I have a PS2 copy of the game, and I did enjoy it for its story, but the combat system in that game can be broken pretty easily if you know what you're doing. So, again, it's going to be more of a story um, run than the um, battles themselves, because the battles can be being made um, boringly easy if you know what you're doing. And it's hard for me to resist breaking a game when you know it's not very hard to do. Oh, yeah. Where are they at? They're in here somewhere. Uh, I'll also offer up Full Metal Alchemist um, 1 and 2. Yeah. Yeah, there's a Full Metal Alchemist game on the PS2, and they're actually um, RPGs, though. I'm not sure how good of an RPG they really are, since I haven't played one beyond like the first stage before, and I didn't even finish that stage. Um, mostly just to check to see if it was I could get working and stuff. I'm going to assume, though, considering that its style is definitely going to work with the Hot Pod, because the Hot Pod usually has issues with um, PS2 games that are done in the style of a PS1 game. So basically, 240p games, it doesn't like. Covered, covered, covered. Oh, um, uh, yes, that leaves only one more option, really, and I gotta go grab my other binder. Ugh. I was going to eventually get to this one anyway, but I'll also offer up Wild Arms 4. The only other Wild Arms game I haven't done at this point for the PS2. I mean, I haven't finished 3 yet, but I'm already working on that one. I've done 5, and I've done Alter Code F, so that leaves 4 is the last one. And I was going to do this one after I get done with 3 regardless, because that's what the poll was for so long ago to do all the Wild Arms games on the PS2. I hadn't done already at that point, which was Alter Code F, 3, and 4. So yeah, I'll throw it up there if people want to have two Wild Arms episodes a week, albeit in different um, games, but yeah. And that's going to do it for this poll. You know, I think 10 options is enough options, really, for people. Till next time, then. See ya.